This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it is the awesome cast. It's time to get Geeky Talk Tech. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And we have a little bit of an audience with us today. We, we, okay, we have people in the studio. I don't know about an audience. They're not really here for this show. No. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're here for the other show and they're watching other shows that pertain to the other show. Oh, you're playing solitaire on your phone. There you go. That, that gets you on the phone. But anyways, we do have in studio, we also have the Dudders. Hey. Katie Dude is the sales and marketing director. Director of sales and Just marketing. Just make up words. I had the right words. They were in the wrong words. Shenanigans. The, the director, director of shenanigans, shenanigans over at, at the Scare, Scare House. House. Yes, that's my full-time job. And also, how long did it take you to find all those bunnies on uh, all the scary bunnies? Oh, gosh. Not too bad. It was uh, most of them. There were some really bad ones on there, um, there was. Giphy. I was impressed. I was like, oh, these are creepy. And then you start going down bad paths. The, the the bunny rabbit hole. L- yeah. l- hey, wait a minute. <laughs> you literally went down the rabbit hole. Yeah, I did. The oh, creepy man. bunny rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. And also with us, he is the gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. It's Sean Chichilla from Studio C in wonderful Dormont, PA. Wonderful Dormont. And it's still light outside. Hey, we, I don't know how well you can see out there. but Yeah, yeah there's definitely a nice light. blown out light bit. It's like it's lighter <laughs> there than it is here somehow. Well, you know, I, I'm 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 a couple miles ahead with the sun. Yeah, you're you're like a half mile well, ahead of us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, no, and actually, I think no, it does work that way. How does the sun rotate? And wait, it's not even the right way. It goes down over that way. Anyways, so how do magnets work? How do magnets work? And of course, of course, producer Missy with us as well, making sure everybody stays straight and things stay awesome. Of course, she doesn't have a microphone on her anymore. She she's been demicrophoned. I should probably turn that on. <laughs> there you go. Hi. Turn it on over here, too. There you go, on both ends. But this is the Awesome Cast. You can check us out at awesomecast.com. Uh, this and all other uh, great interviews. Um, we talked with some nonprofit IT stuff uh, on Awesome Chat last week, so please go check that out. And uh, do, 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 you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Music, uh, podcasts, as well as the video versions on AwesomeCast, uh, YouTube, and Facebook page. And, of course, we're live here on Facebook every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, streaming over at RiversEdgePGH.com. Saturdays at 9 a.m., as well as the third Saturday of the month, we do the Awesome Thing of the Month, as well as uh, streaming over weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern at the 405media.com. And I'll be over in their uh, their neck of the woods here uh, this week as I'm traveling to L.A., and I'm sure I'll travel up the dreaded 405 to get to my hotel uh, for for work this week. But uh, shout-outs to them. Thank you to those uh, streaming partners for supporting the show for so long. Uh, If you want to be part of the studio audience, like our exciting people that are here for a different show, uh, (laughs) you can drop us a line at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com, and we'll leave a seat out for you. And, and, and of course, uh, thank you to our our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast. At the Coffee Club $5 level, they get the the uh, awesome cast gold. Uh, that includes Matt Weller over there, uh, Matt underscore Weller on the Twitter, and the family show dollar level, Mike Michael Fedor, uh, Mike Fedor show on the Twitter. Thank you so much. You guys have been supporting us for a good long time here on the show, literally helping us keep the lights on in the studio. You can support the show at many levels, and, or, or if you're interested in advertising on the show, you can hit us up uh, at awesomecast at Sorgatron Media. Dot com. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. And and Kitty, I was saying before the show, this popped up for me. I didn't know if this was a this was yeah. a a April Fool's thing. So tread lightly on some of these stories here today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, there might be something we were really excited about that turns out is completely not okay. Uh, but Katie, tell us about Wado. You can find Waldo on Google Maps. Of course you can. It's super cool. Make sure you update your Google Maps before you even try this because mm. it should, in theory, when you op- after you update, it should be there. And Waldo will pop up, pop up and be like, hey, find me. Yeah, he just like kind of t- pops out of the corner and says, hello. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, and, and, and you get this little option to, to play a Where's Waldo game. There's a nice little uh, video GIF thing playing here. Oh, it just pulls into a Where's Waldo game completely, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. You, you go into it and you find Waldo and a few of his friends in the different locations and you get medals based upon, you know, finding everybody or Ooh. just finding Waldo. And then you advance each level to each level. And you can go back to it later because if you... Like me, I didn't sit there all day and do it, but I really wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, I went back in later to Google Maps and I asked, where's Waldo? Or you can type in, where's Waldo? And if you expand the map out, you'll see the spots that you have been. So you can find Waldo again and his friends. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't get much chance to play with the uh, Mario Kart thing that happened oh, yeah. either. It was anticlimactic. It was? It was. Because it, it was just, you were just, it was just Google Maps with Mario. Yeah. At, it wasn't, there was no sounds. There was no like, I don't know because they've done a lot better things integrating into maps yeah. as far as like fun little Easter eggs, but that Mario was not their best so, for sure. So it's a, so so and and it's also interesting like that these these like weird um, sponsor or, or kind of licensed things are happening on Google Maps too. Yes, which is nice. I like them; they're mm-hmm. fun. I think it's just anybody that wants to contribute, right? Um, because I, what Google does stuff with like the Niantic and pokemon go i think they i think niantic still google isn't it I perhaps think. maybe maybe they may have split out by now who knows alphabet i, I guess I, I keep forgetting it's a whole different company so yeah check out waldo on your on your uh, google maps and this is both platforms i believe too usually it is yes okay chilla tell us about tell us about the quad ones <laughs> This is interesting. Quad ones. I thought this. I thought this was interesting. I think we touched on privacy in the last episode a little bit. Um, one of the things that that kind of lends to your speed of your browsing is how fast you can get DNS. DNS is the thing that converts www.awesomecast.com to an IP address, and so then you can visit the website. Um, Cloudflare, which is known for their redundancy and caching of websites so that you can always get to them has started to offer a DNS service. Um, It's called 1.1.1.1. Very easy to remember. Um, And also also something that confused people maybe on, because they did announce this on on 4.1 on on April Fool's Day. Oh, yes, they did. That's true. Yeah, they they did announce this on April Fool's Day, uh, April 1st. It is not an April Fool's joke. Um, Obviously, companies can capture where you're going via the um, the DNS servers can keep a log of where you're going. One of the things Cloudflare Flare promises to do, um, they wipe their logs every 24 hours. Um, I thought it was interesting. This this actually this article called back to March 2014th, where the Turkish government uh, blocked Twitter because they didn't want people communicating via Twitter. Um, and so they censored um, the IP address via all their DNS resolvers, and people were literally spray painting 8.8.8.8 um, on the sides of buildings because that's the DNS uh, servers that Google offers up for free. Um, I'm get, I'm betting dollars to donuts. Google isn't wiping those um, those caches every every 24 hours. In fact, I'm sure they're trying to, in all of their power, tie them back to who actually went to which website, um, probably tying it back to things like your IP address and, and who you are and you logged into your Gmail account, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Cloudflare is kind of taking the opposite approach. I, th- I thought it was interesting. And one of the things that I, I've heard a lot of people doing, even in their homes, is um, updating their DNS servers because it, it can, depending on your provider, it can really speed up um, the the browsing experience. I thought this was an interesting tip. Um, it's probably not, if I were to rate it on a scale of one to 10 for difficulty, I'd probably put it at a four. Mm-hmm. Um, but, it, but it definitely can go a long way depending on what the speed of your internet is at your house and who your care and who your provider is as well um, and how much you care about privacy. And, and, and it's not a you know end all be all solution, but it's just another it's another thing you can do, right? Yep. It's like I say, you you, you put a lock on the door not because it's going to keep uh, it's going to guarantee that you're keeping everyone out. It it makes you feel good. It keeps you safe. It's a deterrent. Um, it doesn't mean companies aren't going to find other ways to track you, um, but it's one 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 nice thing that you can kind of keep in that toolkit. Awesome. 
Awesome. So go check. It. So I, I've been considering doing this, is it's, and you have to do this like per computer and per iPhone and everything, right? In order to to take advantage. Yes. Or um, in this article on iMore didn't didn't show necessarily how to do it. What one of the things that you could do is you could go into your router mm-hmm. and tell the router to pass one dot one dot one dot one as it's as your as your uh, DNS servers to hand out when all your machines get IP addresses. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another way where you, you could quickly blanket your entire house. Um, but, but yeah, this just, you t- typically you would go to each device. Awesome. Awesome. So go check that out. I, I think it's, it's worthwhile. And it's, again, you get a little bit of a speed boost. It's a little bit more peace of mind. We, we've had versions of this, like you said, with like Google and things like that, um, happening, uh, you know, where that, 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 you know, just give you a different thing, but you know, then you're funneling through Google and you're just kind of giving them your traffic for them to do whatever it is that they're going to do with it. Right. Uh, which, you know, depending on where you're at, your stance on that, like, Hey, could you imagine if Facebook had one of these, especially these days? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting too, the steps that Facebook's taking. I mean, I probably see in at least one or two articles per day about how Facebook's trying to up their game um, as far as privacy goes and say kind of, Hey, look what, what we did. Um, you know, they're allowing bulk removal of, uh, plugins. They're talking about, um, doing some stuff to make it more, uh, clear that, that they're, if you're talking to a bot and messenger, things of that nature. So I, I think we're going to see a lot of companies responding to this. My favorite response was, uh, Tim Cook's response. Um, someone asked him, of what would you do if you were in Facebook shoes? And his response was, "I would never be in Facebook shoes." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about how about that, Tim? Um, <laughs> well, it, it's interesting to see how that's coming around uh, for for all that, and uh, and hope everybody hasn't deleted their Facebook accounts yet because we're there. We're still there. We're still th- we're still going with the video there. So there's that the, too. The the one thing I'm interested to see if they actually keep is. Um, Apple recently released yesterday. Um, they released their they they released their iOS betas for eight point four, um, and this is public information. There's even the public beta that was released today, so I'm not I'm not giving away anything that everybody else can't go out and, and find very easily. Um, not going against any NDAs or anything. I've noticed in eight point four, and there is a much bigger attention paid to privacy and and i mean in every application as far as hey you 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 told us you wanted this app to be able to track your location are you sure you really want them to track your location like like i'm getting reminders every time i launch different apps to revalidate or re-verify um the privacy uh selections that i made oh years ago now because i keep restoring from backup so Mm -hmm. um all those preferences come back every time I get a new phone, but I'm getting prompted in a lot of those applications of, do you want this app to send you notifications? Do you want this to track your location? Um, even funny ones like, are you sure you want Pokemon Go to track your location? I'm like, well, that'd be kind of pointless if I didn't <laughs> let it see my location. Yeah, but, but at least like, you know, when you get something like, do you want the Walmart app to know where you are all the time or just when the app is open, right? Do you right. want Walmart, you, you know, Walmart knowing that you're going to, you know, the grocery, this grocery store, or this over here and, and knowing your patterns, you know, um, you know, there's a concern. If you are concerned about something like that, if you don't feel okay about it, it's good that it's telling you those things. So mm-hmm. it's good. Uh, I almost went to Katie again for an awesome thing, but sure, it's I, my I turn, isn't awesome it? Things. Yeah. So much awesome. So my awesome thing is freaking Twitch, guys. Uh, you know, I'm a little, I, I may have more than a passing interest in streaming video. Uh, and we've, you know, I, I, we had a Sorgatron Media channel and we've been doing some stuff, some fun stuff there. I hooked up the Xbox here in the studio. Uh, so if we have some downtime, we're at least, uh, uh broadcasting on Twitch through the Xbox, right? At least we're getting that uh, feed out there and doing something and, 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 you know, something that people can watch out there. And, and even led to, um, we did our first, um, wrestler night where we had a, a friend of the show, Brohemoth join us. 
And uh, we played Fortnite uh, last Friday and uh, talked about wrestling, talked about video games. And then uh, I watched him destroy somebody with a brick on Saturday night at, at uh, Fight Society. So mm-hmm. pretty cool, you know, fun things that we're doing there and trying to kind of intermingle things we're doing with video games and be part of that platform because there's a lot of fun stuff happening on Twitch. And, and we've talked about this a bit on the other sh- on the wrestling show, but like wrestling is really getting interested in, in interested in Twitch. A lot of the things that are not WWE this past weekend for Wrestle or this upcoming weekend for WrestleMania is is going to be live on Twitch. And and there's been interesting things going on where they just said there's an Impact versus Lucha Underground show and they just put out a notice that you can actually co-stream that show to your channel and if you would like do commentary or side content. So ideally this could come through. We have this show, you know, this this Lucha Underground Impact or I don't know, probably the top 3 at least in the top 4, we'll just say that evenly, uh promotions in the country. Uh, doing a show together, and I could bring it in hypothetically over on Sorgatron Media, and we could do commentary over it if we wanted to. Like cool things like that, where where something not gaming is embracing something like this. Uh, so I've gotten into it, and we just uh, on top of the Sorgatron Media side, and I'm playing with those tools. We started one for IndieWrestling.us, and as we're doing this show. There's some pretty cool tools that have allowed me to. We're also debuting a video interview that we did earlier today uh, with a uh, friend of the show that uh, was just featured on Monday Night Raw last week. Uh, now going by Jamie Frost, Ellie Friedrichs, uh, you know, depending on uh, what program she's on, I guess. Uh, but you're able to actually upload and stream broadcast things planned out like these interviews that we have like in the can right uh, uh wrestling shows that that we have on the network that we're going to put up there you know our friends from rwa premiere and iwc uh you know and streaming them from wirecast like if we want to do something more than just uh you know put you know put graphics over them or something like that uh so the tools are really in depth and it's been pretty cool to kind of see this back end go on here uh if you're on video this is the live page with uh there's the video that's streaming out there again something that we previously uploaded and then we have this um kind of schedule going on too so people can pop in and watch some of these and it's again something that's just streaming that they don't own and we can kind of preview and let people kind of uh uh catch some of the wrestling and, and you know hopefully you know get them over to indie wrestling.us you know, as you know, as a you know, kind of a buy-in to something like that. But the stats are pretty cool, um, and and you can kind of build around that. It's been uh, it's been interesting to kind of see what those tools are, and, and they're way more in depth than I expected them to be. Because have you ever watched the uh, Twitch stream Chilla where all the bells and whistles are in there? Like I haven't even gotten into a lot of that yet. I have I haven't watched many. I've noticed a couple. You can do some pretty cool overlays, um, mm-hmm. which that's where I was actually one of the. That's actually what caught my eye was some of the crazy overlays people were doing. So, um, but no, that's it's not something that's in my repertoire. For me, the biggest thing this does for me because I've always wanted kind of like a twenty four seven streaming situation. Are um, you sleeping? Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> what? It's like it, I, I just envisioned. Uh, what was the Jim Carrey movie where where he was the Truman Show? The Truman Show. So the the, the Sorgman Show. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of what happens, isn't it, in the long run? Uh, but anyways, but no, like we could do that. Like I could I could set this and schedule this so there is wrestling happening. This is what this is actually what Impact Wrestling is doing with this and with Space TV that I talked about a little bit ago. Like mm-hmm. they're taking their old shows. And they're just broadcasting them, you know. So, hey, a lot of people haven't seen these. Let's just put it out there and let people, you know, sample this stuff. Uh, but, so you could really – the tools are there to just, like, ideally and, – and I don't think this works into the way that I think we want to use the platform. I could take all the shows on our network here and then schedule them out so there's always something playing. It, it wouldn't surprise me if that catches on and you're, you're – I mean, I think you're onto something there because the way I hear about people – watching YouTube and watching just different media streams. Um, it's like they get into something like Twitch and they're like, Oh, here's something. I'll watch that. Oh, there's something else. I'll watch that. Oh, there's something else. I'll watch that. Mm -hmm. And it kind of keeps them going and it keeps them in the, in the platform. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if you did that, that you wouldn't get a lot if if it isn't now, I would say in the coming months or in the coming year, I think I think that type of viewing is the next the iteration of DVR, right? Right. Um, people people stopped people stopped watching live TV and went to DVR. I feel like people are going to leave 
the TV kind of as we know it and go to this new, whether it's a, a pre-recorded uh, stream or, or what just being replayed, I, I think they're going to go kind of to that model. Yeah. Yeah. It, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, and, and say we're playing with it. It's kind of the, I, I feel like we're maybe a little late to the game here, but you know, it's, it's, I think it's time to jump on this. Like there's more than just video games and even it's given me a reason to really get into video games again. You know, I have like, I, I, I messaged Shashi today that Twitch has kind of let me unleash my video game fiend because I feel like I'm doing something right on top of it. You know, I'm finally like I played through two chapters of Back to the Future of the game this week because it's like, well, I can stream it at least and it's content and people can watch it. You know, it, it, it's, it's something that, that we can we can put out there and, and hopefully I can get a microphone and we can at least do audio over it a little bit. Um, because uh, this is, the other thing is my connect doesn't work, Chilla. So, <laughs> so I have. Um, well, that's interesting that you say that. So do me a favor. Hmm. Send me a reminder via slack Why next did i have a feeling if i said something chilla would have a, a solution for me there's a semi reminder next monday night on the slack um so i can pack some stuff up for you so my old xbox one broke mm -hmm. um and i had to buy a new xbox and they stopped manufacturing the kit that let you use the connect on the new device mm-hmm um, so you're more than welcome. Well, thank you. I was gonna, to I was gonna connect. actually lend you mine to see if it worked on your system, <laughs> so I could see if it was the Connect or my Xbox. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna bring. Maybe I'll bring my whole thing there next week. Um, one of the things I, I have my, I can't tell if my Xbox is busted or my power bricks busted, and I'm not investing fifty dollars in a in a power brick to find out that it doesn't work so you're gonna, you're gonna try we'll, we'll try all of our stuff and make sure it interconnects and works and everything like that right yeah that sounds good that sounds good okay now that we've planned that on the air uh <laughs> let me talk you about pizza i want to give a shout out to our good friend slice on broadway supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza did you see the instagrams the other day from opening day i love that they represent on opening day there was like even just like the instagram story where there was just a spinning pizza in the outfield uh, for some reason, uh, you know, but uh, and, and, and this is new. I saw the stickers up here. They, they, they've had online ordering for a little bit, but they are also at least the Beachview location is on Grubhub. So making it even easier for you to get your slice on Broadway on here at the OG location in Beachview on the tracks here right up the road, literally from the studio here. They've been supporting us for a good while. And of course, PNC Park home, the Pittsburgh Pirates, who are 4-0 and last I knew. What? And, uh, and uh, of course, uh, East Liberty and Carnegie PA. Thank you so much for those guys supporting us. Let them know the awesome cast sent you. Alrighty, as I look back to my notes over here that I completely prepared for. Hey, yeah. the Twitter CEO was here last week, is this? I know this kind of fell into, I think it was last Sunday, this was actually, as we were doing the last show, uh, this was actually um, um, uh, set up. But uh, <laughs> there was a, he said basically uh, to Pittsburgh, um, hey, don't be, don't try to be Silicon Valley. Which is probably a good, which is probably a good thing, um, you know, with all, and there's been a lot of discussion this, these days about like all the problems with Silicon Valley as a culture. Um, there's actually a really good, I think the Science Channel, I, one of the one of the podcasts I think both of us listen to, Chilla, uh, talked about the Silicon Valley like documentary series, and I watched most of it on the Science Channel. Uh, uh, and what, they're all, all three episodes are on the website, by the way. Uh, so definitely, definitely worth that. But um, but uh, kind of a interesting thing there. Um, our friends. Uh, do, 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 like our friend Kenny Chen is actually fe uh, featured. Uh, Kenny Chen is going to be coming back here uh, next month to the show as well uh, from over at Ascender. Uh, so you know, again, really good to see uh, Pittsburgh still getting some attention from their kind of hearts in Silicon Valley a little bit. So uh, it's cool to see that, that article is over at uh, nextpittsburgh.com if you want to read that. So um, also. Um, <laughs> Brian, uh, Brian, who has been, you know, he, he was really excited about his trash can last week. <laughs> and, uh, and, and he actually, he's been experimenting with this. Uh, he got his Echo Show. Uh, so that's uh, it's on his nightstand now with a little polar bear saying hello. And I know his big thing was he wanted to use this, and he, he's been calling me on my Echo as well <laughs> to experiment with this, which is really weird. Also, I don't know. I don't know if it's just, and maybe you know this a little bit, Chilla, because he's been sent, leaving me messages, but I get a voice message, but it sounds like he's trying to dictate something. 
It's like he doesn't know what's going to come out the other end. Oh, I've never had that. I've gotten voice messages on there, but it just sounds like someone leaving me a voice message. So, yeah, if he if he if he's thinking too hard about it, um, I guess it could sound like like he's dictating. Mm-hmm. I've, I, yeah, I've never had that. And I've actually used that <laughs> where, where it came in handy is I don't know. But you can do the calling from a phone. Mm hmm like from your, from the app. Um, and everyone forgot their cell phone. Well, there was no one in the house with an actual cell phone (laughs) the one day. Um, but there were people here and I had no, and we don't have a house phone. So it's not like I could call the house and I needed to get a message. So so the echo is the house phone. (laughs) I dropped in, I I used drop in from, from my phone and were able, was able to communicate with everyone in the house. So that's awesome. Like it kind of bridges the gap a little bit, doesn't it? Mm hmm. Uh, so he has some other notes in here. He says, uh, the video conference option is great. Uh, now that it also works with your phone, uh, it really adds to the functionality. We put one in the studio and the one at, in his home desk. Uh, so after playing around with the Alexa show and sorry, and being involved with the uh, ecosystem, I, th- I really think that they're uh, pretty far ahead of Google at this stage. The show and the spot are so solid. And also, it's, it's their platform, right? So it's a little easier to, to kind of make those uh, kind of communicate with each other. I, think. Well, I feel like it's... Amazon's doing a better job at getting the word out of what their platform does and how it works and things like the show. Google has Allo and has Duo, or those, I think those are the two names, but how many people use them and know about them um, to, to, be, to make use of the tech? Anyone with an iOS, Android device or Android device can use any or a Google Home um, could use any one of those devices to communicate and potentially video chat, um, but they just aren't making use of them because I don't think they're they're getting a good customer acquisition on on the platforms. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And here's here's one that uh, that uh, was this Brandon that shared this one. Let me see the portal. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, it was Laura that uh, actually shared this one. It's uh, Meet Alexa Turret. Uh, if you're a fan of Portal, uh, it's an attachment for <laughs> it's an attachment for your uh, Alexa uh, that will or Echo. Sorry, uh, that turns it into the turret bots from um, from Portal. Uh, this is a little bit of visual gag, but apparently, and, and Missy says that it, this, this is probably an April Fool's joke, but apparently somebody has a Portal turret. Uh, skill you can enable on your Echo, and I'm actually going to enable this and play with this a little bit later. Um, well, I, I don't want to yell this because we, we, I really need to hook the the portal. Or I'm sorry, yeah, the portal, uh, the Echo, the portal to Amazon. You know, the, the, is is what it is. Uh, so that was kind of a fun thing that came from the weekend. Um, also, or probably uh, uh, Thinky. I gotta give it, Thinky. Um, wins again and i hope they make this because they made a, a scuba mask that looks like a face hugger from alien <laughs> and and we know that they sometimes manufacture the things that they uh april fools if uh they get enough response so mm-hmm. i can't wait to see that one on the beach uh <laughs> alex also this was crazy to me uh mac break last week uh alex Lindsay, pittsburgh original uh he was talking about this really cool little device called the uh elgato stream deck and I was like, hey, guys, this is pretty cool. And I'm about to, to paste a message into, into like the production feed over on Slack. And then I find out Alex is in there telling, was just telling us about it just came in for him that day, like last Wednesday. And, and I feel like that, that device got a bunch of press like the day before Alex Lindsay covered it because it was on sale. It was $50 off. Wow. I mean, it was so, on so- like the, the – what's the – like the nine to five Mac, nine to five, whatever. Okay. They have like Kinja deals or whatever it is. So, um, so this yeah, is there was a big deal for it. This is a a customizable. It, it, it's a it's a five by three uh, kind of grid of buttons. Ideally, you know, you can tell Elgato does a lot of this. We use an Elgato, uh, uh, you know, capture box <coughs> over here. The HD, the H, the HD sixty, uh, and that's how we get our video game stuff into the switcher situation on top of our Black Magic hardware. Because it's always really finicky with um, you know, the console uh, resolutions and everything, right? So that handles it for us. So Agato is very big into the video game capture, you know, kind of thing. And the idea with this is that you get 
all these buttons, you can customize them. You can digitally customize these buttons um, to do whatever you want, like macros and things, right? You know, ideally, like stuff like a button that makes a, a sound go off when you're you're on Twitch or something. Uh, and, and also, like you could just use as a switcher for something like I was looking at as just like an option to have a physical switcher for things productions like we do, like this one uh, here in the studio when we go online or remotely or anything like that. So, you know, it, it's a really cool thing. So he's had a chance to uh, really play with it. He says uh, it, it, it's definitely, it, it's his awesome thing of the week. Got on sale last week, had a chance to play around with it, and even did a test stream on Twitch. Uh, it is so choice. I guess that's what the kids in California say. Uh, I was able to set up buttons and switch scenes in OBS, and you can do things specific to Twitch and other uh, software like uh, send out chat messages. So there you go. Um, that is definitely recommended. What's it going for now? I think it's, it's it might be back to 150. Which it was on it was on sale for I think 100. For about 100. Hey, and I or keep, maybe it was 199 and it was on sale for 150. Yeah, I, mean, I can't remember. It was 50 dollars off, whatever it was. I'd maybe keep an eye out for that to see if it goes on sale again. Put that on your wish list or something or. It might, uh, you know, you, you you might have the opportunity there, but it looks like it looks like a good tool for uh, the budding, uh, 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 you know, video people out there. And things like OSB or OBS, um, we've been using that for certain things um, as well. You know, when when Wirecast is kind of too much for what we need to do, and mm -hmm. and so I've been playing more with the scene switching and everything. And you can really do some comprehensive stuff in that. Uh, so and that's free. O open open source broadcaster OSB OBS. Again, OBS, open yeah. broadcaster software, something like that. Uh, Google for it, you'll find it. It'll be the first thing, even if you say you type it wrong, because I do all the time when I'm looking for it. Um, but uh, but no, that, that's a, that's a good thing for people that want to definitely get into uh, streaming on a budget. Speaking the, of, that, oh, go ahead. It, it was just real quick too on that, that topic. It was interesting because one thing to call out about that device um, is it leverages a number of, to your point, a number of every streaming service that you're going to use, but you can't kind of create your own um, keys for other applications they don't support. There's a product called X keys um, that a lot of people use for that. And X keys, you can actually write scripts and code behind the buttons. Um, but I, but I, I definitely agree that Elgato device is a, is a nice foray into that, into that technology. Yeah, good, good, good stuff. Uh, good products going on over there. Oh, God, too. Um, speaking of Alex, he's one of our people that support the show, of course. You can check him out, alexcars.com. He does media stuff, all kinds of media stuff. Uh, <laughs> as uh, he says, uh, putting together a puzzle of design media from branding to print to digital projects. Uh, he does logos, merchandise, website, and even photos and video projects. He does some great T-shirts for some professional wrestlers uh, featured on Pro Wrestling Tees. Dot com. He's done uh, uh, covers for us. He's actually even done T-shirts for our own Wrestling Mayhem show here on this network and IndieWrestling.us when we were building that site up. So thank you so much to Alex Cars. That's Alexander Cars, K-A-H-R-S.com, AlexanderCars.com, and also AlexCars.media, and get started with him. He's definitely one of the cool guys. And, and you know, he's, he's a West Coaster. He's, a, uh, he, he's out in California Works really good. Um, he's a part of our Slack, and we do some projects together uh, here in Pittsburgh. So, uh, you know, if you need to outsource, <laughs> uh, why, why not to outsource to California? Uh, and our good friend that uh, definitely is uh, part of the network. And and I know we were very Pittsburgh focused, but it's, it's really cool that we do have people like Alex that are out in California and Brandon out in uh, Kansas City that are uh, enjoying the show as well. And, uh, you know, it was like, Alex, you have a lot of podcasts that represent the L.A. area state of mind. Uh, but he's uh, hanging with us, and I really do appreciate that. Katie, what's going on with Snapchat? Oh, nothing. Well, nothing oh, no. exciting. exciting. <laughs> Snapchat. No, oh, nothing. Nothing. No, nothing. nothing, that's, nothing that's nothing not what the notes say. Well, no, it's – well, that's not what the notes say. Uh, there was – I don't know. I'm sure you probably kept up with the news today in regards to there was a shooting at YouTube. Mm. And um, and out in California, and what this article in particular I thought was interesting is um, TechCrunch went to Snapchat, and if you've gone into the map and looked into the, you know, expanded out the map, you can go in specifically areas. And for me personally, I'm noticing that I am when when something like this happens, when things happen in the world, um, Twitter is definitely 
the thing that's most up to date and, and but I'm also heading over to Snapchat not too far afterwards mm-hmm. to go to the maps because they will highlight events going on like if you look on your map now on Snapchat um, there are the teacher strikes in Kentucky uh, there are also amusement parks that you can look, look in on but there's wherever there's a concentration of people or an event happening so you're able to particular see particular snaps from those areas uh, when the Parkland shooter happened I was watching the, the high school students stories from inside and outside the particular events and um, it's probably i think the news was getting a lot of those yeah as well and and it's it's just another way that i did not expect to use snapchat or to be following the news in this particular way but it's Mm -hmm. another social network kind of putting themselves giving you another source of like firsthand knowledge of what's happening at these particular events it is that thing and it kind of it didn't kind of start with like your meerkats and your your Mm -hmm. periscopes right where it's just like oh crap we can be there yeah you can and and how many stories have we seen over the last few years you know again breaking on these on these things um you're gonna help <laughs> i'm gonna be the old person here yeah. and say how do we get the maps again Katie? Yeah, right. if, you're, if you're not interested and you're like oh i'm gonna download I'm and gonna log in do and, this. Um, what's what's snapchat <laughs> after you freak out about where the stories are now located and everything else um but it's a pinch action where you move two of your fingers together like and then it'll pull up your map and you'll be able to see all of your friends on your map Okay, there you are, right? We're just looking at each other, apparently. Apparently, yeah, we're longing. Yeah, staring at each other. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? And but as you kind of pinch, it zooms out for you, mm-hmm. and you're able to see things will pop up, like the there's basketball games on here, uh, Houston banner fail. I wonder what that's all about. Um, but essentially, they'll start posting. Oh, so sad. They try to post. It looks like they hoisted a banner out in um, Houston, and it did not work as well as planned. But uh, big delays. But you're able to actually look into different cities and kind of see things that are going on, uh, which I think is fun because it's a firsthand account of a lot of things happening. And you can also go down to like amusement parks if you just need a break and you want to look at something fun because there's a lot of just essentially where there's a concentration of people doing things. You're you're not allowed to use the map if you don't allow. Correct. Them to see your location. Your location. Yep. Another one where if you want the the goods, you got to give up the goods. Mm-hmm. A little bit of an exchange. Mm-hmm. A little bit of an exchange. Uh, it's also interesting to be like, oh, hey, I have I have Snapchat friends all the way over there. Look at that. Look at them you all know, over the place. It's like that. It's definitely a little bit more populated than when we checked this out before mm-hmm. as far as just seeing a bunch of different people. So that's pretty cool. So, yeah, it's, like, it's become like a, I guess, a secondary breaking news story mm-hmm. place for me. Uh, and a good one, especially with something that that involves uh, you know the younger population, like a uh, like a uh, the, the the Florida incident. Mm-hmm. Um, like it's going to be Snapchat, yeah, yeah right. Like, like that's where they 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 all are. That's where they're like, this is happening. I'm going to go to my default, which is Snapchat, right? Um, you know, maybe we're going to Twitter or we're going to Facebook Live or something because I think that's really kind of eclipsed, you know, mm-hmm. for us, like the periscopes or anything like that. You know, I was like, I need people to see this. Where I'm going to think of people are going to see this, it's going to be boom, Facebook Live. Let's or see. Instagram stories now. Or Instagram stories, of course, which uh, crosses over with Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's my default on a lot of things. So, um, so yeah. So you're going to totally laugh at me. Um, is there no the, like has Snapchat no longer like segregated the news stories like their news stories versus your Correct. people you follow? So it's all in one. Oh, it's all in one stream. One. Yeah, you missed all the outrage before. <laughs> You're late on the outrage train. I wouldn't Welcome. say I was missing it. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's it's it, it is definitely something you have to get used to, and I don't know. Well, if you don't use it a lot, it really doesn't. Matter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, Sheila, uh, tell us about uh, the, the 360 photos and Messenger. So uh, this is something that, that interests me. You know, we were talking earlier, Facebook keeps making announcements um, a lot about privacy. The one thing they added also recently is Facebook Messenger now lets you send 360 degree photos like they do in the Facebook app. Um, this kind of ties into one of the devices we reviewed a couple shows ago, and I have the link mm-hmm. in there um, to that one as well. That was also recently... the. Um, Insta 361, which I did see on the yep. shelf in the Apple store th- uh, today. Yep, that just launched, and Apple actually has a nice little bundle. Um, the, that device mm-hmm. uh, runs what was it, two ninety nine, and it's like three. It was about thirty. Yeah, it was about three thirty, and included like the tripod and a whole bunch of other stuff, selfie stick, selfie stick right handle, there. tripod, mm-hmm. SD card, USB cable, lens cloth, all the all the all the goodies that you need with your three sixty camera. But interesting and. <clears throat> I think it's interesting because I, I, I'm wondering, are we going to see more moves for things just like Facebook Messenger? Um, I'm waiting to see 
when are we going to get 360 degrees uh, photos in our iMessage or whatever your text messaging application of choice is. Um, but Google has added uh, photos and what they call HD quality um, video um, to Messenger. Uh, their HD quality video is limited to 720p rather than 1080. And the guess is that's probably primarily due to bandwidth concerns. Um, because if you're doing 360 degree video um, and you're trying to push that to someone over cellular network, you could definitely dig into people's data caps. Um, and the the photos are available worldwide where the HD video is only available in a subset of countries. The US is one of them. Um, so it is out there. Um, and then as we made mention, you know, you want to get this capability, you can you can use their camera app and just kind of spin around in a circle and you'll get that 360 degree photo that you can put in there, or you can use devices like the Insta 361 um, that we've talked about on the show. Um, Samsung has their device, their newer devices, iOS and, and Android as well. Um, so go check it out and start sending your 360 degree photos and videos. There you go. There you go. This is the thing that's going to normalize it is when, when, you know, the more and more Facebook has it, you know, Hey, wait for uh, Instagram to drop 360 photos in there. That'll blow it up pretty good too. Uh, I'm interested to see when they move the cameras on the, the iPhone gets thin enough. They move the cameras, make them big enough on both sides of the phone. And you can just take a 360 degree with the front and back facing you know what, cameras they, you right know, on your device. It's the front, the back, and then they put one on the edges on the side. You're mm-hmm. making you not able to use a case ever uh, <laughs> <laughs> is what ends up happening. So, hey, you know, there, there's this. I, I'm I, I, another thing that I'm late to the game because I'm learning about Snapchat and Twitch this week, like, like an old person. Um, but I saw this ad last night during Monday Night Raw. Pizza Hut has a pair of shoes. And apparently this is not the first time they've done this. So I was learning today because then then I saw Engadget had a post about it. Uh, it's the Pizza Hut smart shoes turning you into the most fashionable couch potato over at Engadget. So these shoes are very stylish. They say pizza on the side. Uh, <laughs> and if you hit the button, one, they will control your DVR on your TV. And if you hit the other button, they'll order you two uh, medium pizzas. This is not the most exciting thing I've seen that ordered pizzas. The, the, what's the most exciting thing you've seen that's ordered pizzas? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, never mind. <laughs> that never mind. I remember that episode now. <laughs> so that means you got to keep your shoes on. I, no, no, no. There's, there's, for longtime listeners, or at least in the last month, you'll get that one. Uh, but anyways, uh, <laughs> so... So again, this is, um, I believe, the same company that does the interesting KFC promotions, including uh, virtual reality um, um, uh, training videos, I guess, uh, that they have going on. Uh, so, how much are they going for? Like these are like you can buy these. Yet I don't think I see a link in here. Yeah, I was but, wondering how they can because I've seen these before too on other commercials and other sites um, in the in prior months. I was wondering how they connect. Are they connected to your Wi-Fi? Is it Bluetooth to your phone? No, 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 no. Here it is. Here it is. I, is it like I, a bat I, I found, signal? It shines I found a pizza up in the sky? the technical paragraph in this thing. <laughs> uh, it's apparently uh, they added an IR blaster to the left shoe's tongue, uh, which you can pair to a supported set-top box by simply pointing the Pi Tops 2 at them and pressing a button on them. It only works with certain devices from Dish, DirecTV, Fios, Spectrum, and Xfinity. And all you can do is pause whatever you're watching and nothing else beyond that. But still. But how does it get your pizza to you? But uh, well, there, I have to find the other technical paragraph here. Uh, but uh, I think it links to your phone app. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, the iOS app. There's actually <laughs> there's actually a there's a, there's this sentence I'm saying in 2018. There's an app for your shoes, Chilla. <laughs> There's an app for I believe it. Yeah. So you have to go download that app. It pairs to your shoes. It pairs <laughs> to your pair of shoes. Oh, jeez. Is it a Bluetooth pair done. to your I'm pair? I'm done. I'm done with the show. I think. I think. I think this is. We can finally close because we have pair, Bluetooth pairable shoes now. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing else. There's nothing else past this, right? Like, it's over. <laughs> It's over. What else can they put Bluetooth in? <laughs> Do we want to know? Yeah. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I mean, we know the other thing that orders pizza that that Katie talked about a few weeks ago. So, yep. Uh huh. Well, uh, actually, we didn't figure out how that ordered the pizza. Did we? I don't know. I said we didn't. Oh, we did. No, we did. We did. We did. We did. I think we did. We did. Yeah. Anyways, if oh, you want to get connected. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, okay. If you want. <laughs> This will be I'll gold go after the show. <laughs> uh, but if you want to get a pair of these shoes, they're all over eBay. There were only 50 of them made. 50 pairs oh, made. Okay. That's why you can't find them. There's only 50 <laughs> pairs made. And they're all over freaking eBay. So um, they're going for like two and three thousand dollars. But um, yeah, they oh, originally we, can sold- make, we can make a pair of these shoes. Yeah. It's a, it's the a universal remote in your shoe. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Uh, Chilla, I, I don't know if there's much to say because I feel like I've heard it done to death uh, opinions about uh, uh, technology and education. But what is, was there anything? And again, it, it, this is something that so we missed since we didn't do an episode last week or we did it early. Um, Apple had an educational uh, event, which the big news is there is a was a three hundred twenty nine dollar uh, iPad available now. So so the, the yeah the well I, so the i the last gen iPad was also only. Three hundred twenty-nine dollars. Uh, I think the big the big deal on this one is is it's a it's a spec bump um, on the processor to bring it up to more current. It's not the A11 that we'll probably see in the Pro towards the end of the year. It's the A10 that was in the iPhone Seven modified chip. So it's the A10X. Um, the big deal for this is that the pencil. Um, their baseline device at the three hundred and twenty-nine dollar price point allows you to use the pencil. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Um, they took and updated all of their apps um, to make use of the pencil. So uh, Pages, Keynote, um, all those, dev- all those, all their kind of office level apps. The other thing they allowed you, now allow you to do is you can use Pages to create uh, eBooks. Um, also, kind of neat. You don't have to have a Mac anymore. You just have to use iBook Author. Um, so kind of hitting on those schools. Uh, quick tip on that one: uh, Schools do get those devices at two hundred and ninety nine dollars instead of three twenty nine. Um, and yeah, and, and if you're buying the device for someone for educational purposes, you can actually get that same two ninety nine price point um, uh, for a personal for 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 normals um, that aren't actually teachers or educational institutions. There's a special site you can go to, and you're allowed up to five order five per year. Um, for your own uses. So I thought that was kind of neat. Um, but I think in a nutshell, that was the main crux of the educational story. Real real quick on that, that note, they, they've added a lot of stuff that's coming in eight or in 11.4, um, the next iteration of the OS that's really going to key itself towards teachers. And I think we'll quickly see that um, actually bleed into the enterprise for those large companies that are trying to deploy uh, iPads and mass. Awesome. Awesome. I'm sorry. I was distracted because Patreon of the show, uh, just shared with me a, uh, Porgwin, Porgins shirt, which is the, the little fuzzy things from the last Jedi in penguins, Pittsburgh penguins <laughs> here, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, no, yeah, it was a, it, it is a little bit of an update and we'll see what else happens with the, the iPads, uh, going on here. But, uh, <laughs> Sorry, sorry, I just can't get enough of that one. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, hey, we got a couple of stories we want to touch on real quick because I know you got a heart out here in a, a few minutes, Chilla. But first, want to give a shout out to our friends at MillvilleMusic.org. The Millville Music Festival is coming up on May twelfth. Uh, if uh, you missed the last years, this is a two point oh, and I've been hearing some insights about some interesting things going on there. There will be live streaming of the event, but we do implore you to go down to Millville. Check out Millville. If you've never been, uh, in, and if you didn't know there was a Hardee's in there, there's one over there, there's another reason to go. But you should go for the music. Our good friends at the River's Edge, uh, the Metal Edge, uh, I think has a stage as well. Um, and uh, you can check out all the info at millvillemusic.org. Um, um, uh, find out about the biggest little secret next to Pittsburgh, up the river there, up 28. Uh, and they're doing updates every week, I believe, of uh, what's going on uh, as they're building to the event. Uh, so many bands, and of course, uh, Psychic Media Service is a sponsor of the event, and we have, it's definitely something we're behind and helping out there. I know Missy has had a uh, big hand helping out with uh, uh, the event as well, or at least, or at least your little part, right? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm helping out with some stuff. Um, 
one of the really cool things, and I know I've mentioned this before, is in addition to, I think we're aiming for 150 bands to commemorate the 150th anniversary for Millvale this year, we are also doing a visual art component this year. So the Sedgwick Street, which is a full actual street in Millvale, is going to be closed off for a street fair type of event while all of this other stuff is going on, and we're going to be broad or we're going to be showcasing some local visual artists so painters sculptors artisans of all varieties so that that's an addition that we made this year from last year based on some of the feedback we heard there you go go make your plans may 12 2018 org for that info uh from that um so what fi- firefox is going ar and vr chilla yeah, this this kind of caught me off guard. So they're they're going to be working on a browser, um, and the, the it was kind of a they didn't actually announce the end the end state product, but they've made comments that they're working on a new browser called Firefox Reality. There is a video. Um, there is a video of this now. Yeah, there's a, there's a video. Um, what I mean is, I I don't think there's like an early alpha or beta build um, mm. where we can actually see you and I can experience it. Mm. Um, I, I thought it was interesting. I've always been fascinated with the the AR and VR concept, where you know I could I could have these virtual screens, right? If I could have virtual browser tabs all over my wall or all over some kind of three dimensional space, um, I always thought that would be pretty cool. Um, but Firefox is bringing that type of concept um, to different headsets. I think they're targeting the HTC Vive and Oculus Rift first, which I hope means that that comes to um, Samsung type devices. It'll be interesting to see how Google answer, answers back to this. Firefox already supports web VR. Um, they've also started to make plugins for Firefox that allows you to containerize and quarantine. Um, website data like Facebook <laughs> um, to keep your content private, to keep things in your browser outside of that single tab private. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where they go in this. And it, again, I think this is just another one of those points where it's becoming more, more and more and more mainstream. Mm-hmm. Be interesting. So the, I mean, there's a few browsers out there. I know I played with the Samsung and in the, in the, I think there was a basically a Google Chrome one on the Android for the the Samsung Gear. Um, which are just kind of a, a mobile browser on a wall for the most part, right? Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what they bring on top of that. I, I, I want the AR one, you know, and I haven't seen a lot of good implementations. Impl- implementations? Yes. Implementations? Jeez. Talking tonight. Uh, of, uh, of, uh, of kind of AR uh, desktops like that. Um, one, one of the things I'm interested in is are we going to see – if you remember back in the day, I think there were some iOS and Android like Twitter apps and some other applications that kind of made the the back end of the interface translucent. So if you were walking down the street mm-hmm. typing a message, you could see through <laughs> what you were working on. I remember on. that. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering when we're going to get to like all the white space that's typically on a web page. Will that? Well, I just see what's in front of me as I'm surfing the web walking down the street. You know, my biggest problem, I I, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to see Ready Player One. I have not. I want to. There's scenes where people are literally have VR helmets as they're walking down the street. And I don't know how that works. (laughs) It's like that dodgeball game that we were watching. Oh, yeah. The the sweet like Dragon Ball Z dodgeball game that that was all AR. Yeah, it was all. but, But the camera covered their face but they didn't use the camera on the other side of the phone it was to... basically yeah it was like a gear vr with the in the camera on the phone was how they looked through to see the overlays right? mm-hmm. so um and, and i guess that's i mean the, the the vive does that the htc vive does that where they have a camera on the one side and you can turn it on to see your hands if you need to like while you're in game uh so it, i can see a little bit of uh, playing with that especially as those things become um, as we're seeing with the new versions of Vive and Oculus, like maybe standalone kind of devices and everything, right? So mm-hmm. it'll be interesting, interesting to see how that develops in the next years as we get even closer to, to Ready Player One. Um, but uh, and I definitely recommend definitely people on this show that go go check that that movie out because it really fits and it doesn't feel like it's. I think it's like what 10, 15 years in the future. 
And like, the, yeah, they have a lot of, uh, I just don't want to spoil anything up more than the trailer has. Uh, but there's a lot of brands that are very familiar there that, that, uh, that, that people are playing with today. We're like, yeah, of course there's going to be a new version of, uh, you know, I think Overwatch we know is in there, right. You know, in, in, in 20 years from now for whatever that platform is. Right. Um, so it didn't feel too detached. It was pretty cool. Uh, if, if you want to have a Ready Player One conversation, talk to Kraus, yeah. Crazy Kraus. I think he's he went and saw the movie. He's read the book four times. He's listened to the audio version of the book twice. Um, and and I, like I said, he watched the movie over the weekend. So you know he's very into it. We're gonna we're gonna do a spoiler thread over on the Awesome Cast <laughs> Facebook group. So uh, so go check that out over there. Um, Real quick, want to take a look at the calendar. Uh, mostly, we have a lot of stuff scheduled out. Uh, we haven't had a lot of guests on here lately, so I wanted to make sure that changes. Uh, so we do have scheduled next week. John Carmen will be returning to the show. Always fun. Also, our friend from uh, Pitchworks podcast to go check out that show. Scott McTaggart will be uh, joining us on the 17th. We got to hang out with Scott's mom at the AT&T store when we were uh, getting upgrades a couple weeks ago. Uh, Brian Crawford will be returning to tell us what he's doing lately with the uh, Amazon show. And he, he, I'm sorry, yeah, the Amazon show. Um, he was saying he's got a couple awesome things I think uh, uh, he has in the works. Uh, so looking forward for that when he comes back on the show. Cynthia Klosky of Shift Collaborative is going to be joining us on May 8th. And we just scheduled, we mentioned him in the article earlier with the Twitter CEO. Kenny Chen from Ascender will be joining us on the 22nd. I think he was saying he he's going to be coming back from an AI conference of some sort or event. Uh, so we'll be able to pick his brain uh, about artificial intelligence because I know he's been very involved with the uh, AIX Prize and events like that. Uh, so uh, it'll be cool to get him back on the show and get his perspective on things going on there. The always busy Kenny Chen. Uh, so Kenny, anything going on with you? You guys have some awesome podcasts lately coming uh, on the Scarehouse podcast. Great Q and A that we had fun uh, doing the Facebook yeah, that was Live fun with. One. Yeah, we like that one. Um, we have another one coming out this week on Thursday with our friend Steve Paris. Yeah, so he'll be. We'll talk to him, and I think that's it right now. <laughs> Steve like, Paris was from. Uh, he was the the one with the great Silence of the Lambs stories. Oh yes, yes, yes. Uh, worked worked on Silence of the Lambs. Worked a lot of movies and production here in the city yes. and abroad. Uh, so yeah, that was a, that was a fun. I, I, I geeked out a bit at that conversation when you guys were recording it. So uh, definitely looking forward to that. Good stuff happening at ScarehousePodcast dot com. Mm-hmm. Okay. And John Chichilla, Chilla on the Twitters. Chillatech.net and John Chichilla on the Facebooks. There you go. And, of course, check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. All the myriad of geeky and in Pittsburgh-based podcasts happening over there, including uh, our friends at Bold Pittsburgh, our uh, wrestling stuff with Wrestling Mayhem Show and Indie Mayhem Show. A lot of fun. Uh, some people getting having some interesting TV time, like I was talking about before, with that's uh, broadcasting over on Twitch these days. And uh, hit me up at Sorgatron on the Twitter if uh, you want to talk tech there too. Uh, check out everything. Subscribe to the show, awesomecast.com, patreon.com slash awesomecast. Thank you to our awesome chat room. I know I saw Alex in there. Brian was in there uh, from uh, River's Edge. Uh, uh, what's up, Ben? hanging out and uh, I think I saw see Amanda pop in there as well I know she usually does Steve uh, thank you so much for joining us here thank you to our awesome chat room you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com